The Lim 5P is a Polish fighter based on the MiG-17 in War Thunder's German tech tree. Let's check it out. Poland has had a very capable aviation industry going back into the 1920s. After World War II, Poland wanted to gain some experience with manufacturing jet aircraft, and they licensed production of both the MiG-15 and MiG-17 from the Soviet Union during the 1950s. The engineers in Poland made some changes to the basic MiG-17 aircraft, which entered production as the Lim-5 in 1956. Later, the updated MiG-17 PF model was licensed and produced as the Lim-5 P. This new version included some additional radio equipment, all-weather capability, and notably the Izumrud radar set. The Lim 5P was generally a successful design, which served through the end of the 1960s, and the existing airframes were eventually converted into the Lim 6 ground attack variant which carried external rocket pods and avionics equipment that was a bit more suited to close air support than air interception. The Lim 5P was also exported, and it served with the air forces of Bulgaria, Indonesia, East Germany, and Guinea-Bissau. An ex-Syrian Lim 5, the original model, was also operated by the United States Air Force out of Area 51 for evaluation purposes beginning in 1969 under the project codename Have Drill. This aircraft was known as the YF-113A in American service in order to disguise its real identity. The Lim 5P can be visually distinguished from other versions and earlier versions of the MiG-17 by the inclusion of its radar lip above the intake and the radar housing inside the intake, but without the brake chute assembly that was added to the Lim-6. While the MiG-17PF, which the Lim-5P was based on, was eventually upgraded to carry the K-5 beam-riding air-to-air missile, the Lim-5 never received guided weapons. What we get in War Thunder is the East German Lim 5P, a jet fighter in rank 5 of the German air tree at a battle rating of 9.0. The plane carries the RP 5 Izumrud radar set, which combines two smaller radar dishes to provide a primitive equivalent of scan wall track functionality, but keep in mind that it functions like two radar systems at the same time. This is a very short-range radar set with no advanced modes or dish angles, but it does support ACM boresight mode for targeting. The armament consists of three 23mm NR-23 cannons with a total of 300 rounds of ammunition. These guns give an adequate selection of ammo belts, but keep in mind that these are somewhat low-velocity cannons. It's easier than aiming the mixed caliber guns on the MiG-15, since all three have the same ballistics, but the velocity is very low and accuracy is kind of poor, so up-close shooting is generally the way to go whenever possible. There are no external weapons or a ballistics computer. The flight performance of the LIM-5P is generally pretty similar to the MiG-17, but it's got an afterburner which might not seem like it would change much, but it ends up making an enormous difference. The acceleration and rate of climb on this plane are excellent, and its energy loss in close combat is mitigated a bit by the increased thrust, and the plane is far better in vertical maneuvers than most other subsonic gunfighters. Overall agility is pretty solid, but there are some notes. The rate of roll isn't great, and the controls lock up hard at higher speeds. I can't stress that enough. You want to keep the airspeed under 800 kilometers an hour if you're going to need to make anything but the most gentle turns. And if you want to be successful in this plane, you're going to need to learn the air brake. The common trick is to cut into a turn from high speed, kill the afterburner, pop the air brake, wait about one second, and then hit your maneuver. 
Similar to a few other planes from this era, the elevators compress hard accelerating into a turn, so you have to make sure you break out of that part of the flight envelope before your full turn rate kicks in, so again, get on that air brake. The last thing to mention is that in low and medium speed maneuvers, like chasing somebody who's jinking around like a headless chicken, the LIM-5P keeps its energy very efficiently, and this can actually be a bit of an issue. So if you find yourself in an extended tail chase trying to get a snapshot on some guy wiggling all over the place, pay very close attention to your speed, use your air brake, and lock up that radar to get an accurate speed differential on the target, or you may overtake them very quickly. Flying the LIM-5P into air battles is a little more flexible than some of the other subsonic gunslingers, mainly due to its excellent rate of climb. If you don't get up-tiered into F-4Cs, climbing to around 5,000 meters or so is a perfectly good opener at the start of a match and allows you the chance to intercept bombers or even dive down onto other fighters that might not climb as well. You'll usually find a bunch of Harriers up there these days, though, so keep an eye out. Now, in an even-tiered match, or in a down-tier, you'll find that with a little practice, the LIM-5 is an amazing fighter. It has great engine response and accelerates very well through the lower and medium speeds, which can help you get the jump on a lot of the other subsonic gunfighter jets. Its cannons are pretty easy to score hits with after you get adjusted to the low velocity, and it gets an adequate supply of ammunition. The radar set actually ends up being pretty useful sometimes, as a radar lock is going to give you accurate information about the target's speed and your rate of closure, which can help avoid overshooting or figuring out when you want to use the afterburner. In an up tier, things are a bit more difficult. This jet can get tiered into R-60s and semi-active radar missiles, and it has no defenses against them beyond just trying to dodge. No radar warning receiver, even though in real life this model had an early version of the Sirena system, and no countermeasures. You also frequently have to deal with the AIM-9L shots coming out of A-10s, so keep an eye out for those. In terms of ground attack, the plane only has its three cannons, no rockets or bombs or anything, so kind of limited potential there. This is an air combat fighter. Visually, the LIM-5P looks a lot like the other MiG-17 variants in the game. What a surprise. The main exception is that it's got the radar housing in and above the air intake. Personally, I think the Azumrud radar housing looks kind of neat, like on the MiG-19. But some people are going to think it's a bit fugly. No custom skins or anything, at least not yet. But there are already a few good ones up on War Thunder Live, so check those out if you're interested. Landing this jet is pretty basic for this kind of aircraft. You can drop gear and flaps a little over 400 kilometers an hour, but you don't get a braking chute, so the landing run can be a little long if you come in hot. The gear is pretty tough though, like most other Soviet origin jets from this period, which makes rough landings a little more survivable. The cockpit is kind of a love-hate thing. The gun sight is very easy to use, the radar scope is in a good spot, and the instruments are all quick to find. But the canopy bracing gets in the way, and in particular, the dorsal spine with the mirror can be seriously obstructive in a dogfight. Overall, kind of a mediocre cockpit. To close out on the LIM-5P. This jet has great flight performance, and it dogfights very well. It gets the RP-5 radar set, and it's got an afterburner. However, the controls lock up really bad at high speed. Its rate of roll isn't great, and its cannons are very low velocity. The final verdict on the LIM-5P is that this jet is extremely effective in the subsonic gunfighter jet meta, but like most other jets in this category, it suffers really badly in up-tier matches into Mach 2 jets and radar missiles. How you play it will probably end up depending entirely on whether or not you got up-tiered, but overall, this is a really good plane. As always, thanks for watching.
Thank <laughs> you.